Hi there, I'm Jo from So Creative in Petersfield. Just today, I'm going to introduce you to the Janome DKS range. The DKS stands for Direct Key Selection, which makes these machines very, very super easy to use. So we've got the DKS 100 that has 100 stitches and the DKS 30 that has 30 stitches. I'm going to demonstrate on the 100, but they're pretty much the same other than the amount of stitches and how you access them. So I'm going to move the 30 out of the way and I'm going to show you how to use the DKS 100. So the DKS 100 has 100 stitches and it has a separate little card here. It also comes with a knee lift and the knee lift enables you to use uh, to lift the presser foot when you're doing quilting and, and things like that. But this is how it goes in and comes out. I don't actually need it today, but that's where it goes in that slot there. So we switch the machine on at the side and it's always ready to sew with um, a straight stitch with needle in the middle position. So on this machine, we've got a speed control. We've got the lovely scissors function, needle up, needle down. This will always stop with needle down. We've got a stay stitch button, a reverse button and a start stop button if we didn't want to use our, uh, our foot pedal. It's got a lovely easy wind bobbin and up the top here, we've got indications of how to thread properly, but I'll be going through that. And this bit here, which is our bobbin uh, winding tension. This button here is our presser foot pressure. So it will arrive to you if you've just opened up your box with it set on number six. And that means that the presser foot here is giving maximum pressure onto your fabric. Now, sometimes if you're quilting, you may want to raise that or loosen it off a bit, or if you're doing a thick wool, a woolen coat, so you'd loosen this, but you don't need to loosen it if your stitches weren't looking right or feeding through properly. But that's another lovely feature, along with the fact that this opens up and has lovely lighting and a really superior feed. Um, so that's about it. Let's get started with uh, a bobbin wind. So always with Janome, treat them well, give them good quality thread. I'm using a Gutterman thread here and the thread needs to come underneath and sit onto the horizontal spool holder. Remove any sticky bits because believe me, they'll get caught up in your feed and you don't want that. Secure the thread so as it unwinds nicely. And this has an easy wind bobbin. So I'm just going to put the empty bobbin onto the bobbin winder as such make sure it's fully down and take the thread and it's literally just going to go in between those two screws there or the screw in the washer and you can feel now that there's some tension take a little bit of extra thread and take the thread behind so this is nice and straight here and then with my right hand i'm going to use this thread in my hand to wind it clockwise around for a few rotations and underneath here is a little cutter. So I can hook it around the cutter and pull. So there's no need to put the thread up through the little hole. I can now push the bobbin winder over. The machine is telling me that it's in bobbin winding mode. This is one of those opportunities when I'm actually going to take the foot pedal out. So remove the foot pedal and I can just press start stop. I can make it go a little bit faster with my speed control. And actually that's probably enough for now. So I'm going to just stop it, pop my foot pedal back in, bring that over, and then I can use this little cutter under here again to cut the bobbin thread. So because I've moved the bobbin over, the display is showing that it's just ready to sew, but of course it's not threaded. So we're going to pop the bobbin in as a P for perfect. So if we look there, it looks like a letter P. We push open the little brown, uh, black slider there and the bobbin cover comes open. We pop it in as a P for perfect or anti-clockwise. And then we've got tension slots that we must get in. So by holding the bobbin to stop it uh, winding or unwinding, and I'm just going to move the thread under and catch it underneath this little arm as well and then get into the groove. You'll see there's a number one and number two, and there's a little blade there. And that's all you have to do, just ensuring that the bobbin is in tension. By doing that, it will have gone through that little slit at six o'clock and gone in through the bobbin tension. Then all we need to do is put our bobbin cover on. So we don't need to pull up our bobbin thread. Now we're going to thread the machine. So we take it out of that bobbin winding 
and we go behind at number one. So it clicks behind there, number one. And we'll see we're on number two. It's crucial at this stage to remember that our presser foot is in the upright position because here is our tension and our tension discs are open when our presser foot is up and closed when our presser foot is down. So they must be open to accommodate the thread. We take it down and up and around and I hold this just to pull it through number four, which is the take up lever. And you can always double check it's gone through the little hole, which mine has. So it comes down to number five. There's a little dog leg there. There's another one at the top of the needle. To a computerized machine, you'll know that the needle always stops and retracts into the right place whenever you've used the needle up, needle down, or when you've used your scissors. But if you're used to using your hand wheel, your needle could be in all sorts of places and that could affect how, you, how successful the needle um, threader is for you. So the best way, if you're not sure if you've touched your hand wheel, is to use the needle down button, needle up, and it will reset into the right place to use the needle threader. Otherwise, you will damage your needle threader. So to use the needle threader, we're just bringing the needle threader all the way down, and there's a little red arrow. We're going to hook the thread under the first elbow, under the second elbow in front of the little red arrow, holding it slightly behind so as it's not loose but not too tight. And then with my thumb and forefinger, I'm going to lift it and let go with my right hand. And it creates a little loop, which I can then pull from the back and that's it threaded. Once it's threaded, we put it through the feet, through the open bit of the feet, and that's it. We can use a little thread cutter at the side if we've got too much thread. And that's it, we're ready to sew. As I say, this has got a speed control and it starts off with a straight stitch. So as we've just threaded, we may as well just try it out. I'm going to take the speed control down a bit, get the um, fabric underneath the feed dogs so as the um, feed dogs can feed the fabric through. Pop the presser foot down. Now with this machine, if I try to sew without the presser foot down, it won't work. So that's always a lovely way to know if you're new to sewing, because otherwise you can really muck your machine up. So we've gonna put the presser foot down and I'm going to put my foot on the foot pedal and we're literally just doing a straight stitch. I've got my foot flat on and I can use the speed control to determine how fast I want to go. When I get to the end, I could do a little stay stitch. So this one here, if I push this once and then put my foot down on the foot pedal, it will do a little secure stitch at the end. I could have done that at the beginning as well. And now, needles down, you'll notice, I can just press the scissors and you'll see that the needle goes up, which is a perfect place for re-threading if we needed to. We can lift the presser foot, pull it out and check our stitching. So that is absolutely perfect. So we know that it's threaded right. If it was loopy at the top, it will mean that the bobbin is not in tension. If it's loopy at the bottom, it will mean that this top thread is either not in tension or is not through this take up lever. So let's see what else this machine will do because it will obviously do lots of things other than just a straight stitch. Now with the 30, each one of these buttons are a different stitch. So with this one, with the 100, we've got our go-to buttons. So they're the ones we're going to use mostly. So let's have a look at the zigzag stitch, which is 07, and it's doing a default zigzag. Now with the Janome, when it starts off sewing, it will do a little secure stitch at the beginning, and then it will start running. So this is the default, which is three millimeters wide and 1.5 millimeters long. So if I show you that, it's quite a, um, a small zigzag. Now we can change this by using these buttons here. So I can take it up to a five and up to a two and a half and now we'll have a wider, longer zigzag. And if I do a little uh, stay stitch at the end, it will then secure that zigzag. Press the scissors and then you can see by manipulating the sizes that's what you get. Now, obviously, on this fabric, that small one is better because you can see that that's puckering, but that's just to give you an idea how you can change these. We've got the buttonholes there, but I'm just going to start off by looking at some decorative stitches and how easy it is to get them on this direct key selection. 
So if I chose number 58, for instance, all I need to do is type in 58, and this is going to give me this little bubble design here. Now, let me see if some stitcher you can actually change. Oh, look, so this one I can actually make bigger. So I'm going to give him a little bigger go. Some stitches you can't change, but some you can. So I'm going to get to the end of the pattern design by just pushing this little stay stitch button. So it will take me to the end of the design. Press the scissors. And there we are. Well, that's really pretty. Actually, that's lovely. So that was the actual default, but I made it a little bit bigger. Um, and that's how simple it is to do. So let's have a look at, say, number 99. And this is where I can show you what this stay stitch button does. So if I just put my foot on the foot pedal, and now it's going to be um, sewing out the word sweet. And I'll wait for it to get to the end. Now, what I may just want one sweet, in which case you've got to kind of look. But if you just press the stay stitch button once, it, once it's going, it will now get to the end of that design. So it'll get to the end of the word sweet, stop, do a secure stitch, then I can scissor and I will have two sweets. How cute is that? So that's a really lovely feature and that's what we love about the DKS. Now you may notice on this card, there's some, um, some of the numbers are shaded out and these are numbers that you can use a twin needle for. So for decorative stitching, it's wonderful. You could two, do, do two different colors and have twin needle stitching, which is a really lovely, fun thing to do. But we're going to go and have a little practice of a buttonhole. So how super easy this is. I'm just going to go, now there are other buttonholes. If you see up here, we've got more than the three that are there, uh, four including the stretch stitch buttonhole. And there are uh, two, four, an extra one. So I'm just gonna to go to there, number 11. To take the foot off, there's a little black button at the back of the foot. I push it and the foot drops off like so. Now each of these feet have got letters in them and on the machine it tells you what foot to use. So this is the A foot, which is the standard zigzag foot. And this one is telling us to use foot R. So you can't always see the foot R, but it does say foot R in there. So this is the buttonhole foot. And this is where it's going to get attached with the button at the back. So you pull it open like so, pop a button in, squeeze it down. And this is how big the buttonhole is to fit that size button. So the next thing I'm going to do is attach it to the machine. Now it's quite big and bulky, so there is an extra lift. So once you've taken your presser foot up, you can actually manually lift it up again quite far and then just attach it like so. The next thing we're going to do on this screen is find the doobry. I love the doobry, but it's actually called a buttonhole lever and it's a button that pulls down behind the needle threader and it's got a little black um, stopper on it and it fits behind the first start of the buttonhole. I'm going to make my buttonhole fabric a bit thicker because if you were doing a buttonhole, you'd have interfacing and various layers of fabric. So I just want it to succeed. And you can actually, once you do a test sew of your button, if it's not quite right, you can change the width and the length there to a certain degree. I'm all set up for the buttonhole, another ideal opportunity to take your foot pedal out. And the main reason for that is that the buttonhole is automatic. It wants to do the whole thing by itself. You're there to guide the fabric and to make sure nothing goes wrong. But on the whole, it will then do the whole process. I'm just going to press start, stop, and off we go. Does a little secure stitch at the end, makes a little noise to tell you it's finished. I can then press scissors, it's cut, and it's a perfect buttonhole. Let's see if it fits the button. And I'll do that first by opening it. You get a little unpicker with your kit. And to unpick, and really all you need to do is just get rid of those little threads. And you use the unpicker in at the end. I tend to go in at the end to the middle, just run it through to the middle, then go the other end 
in there, use the little blade until it meets there. And then we'll have a look and see if this is perfect. I know it's going to be for this button hole and for this button. So in there, that's it. Beautiful buttonhole. I'm going to pop the A foot back on and really that's it. Super machine. So the best thing to do if you find yourself, you can either switch the machine off and back on again or just push your number one and you're back in there. Um, if you need to, you can lock the machine by pushing this. It goes into a safe mode and then nothing is going to get um, changed or moved. So th there we are, that's the Genoma DKS series. We looked at the DKS 100. We have both the 30 and the 100 as demo models in our store. If you'd like to have a play and see how easy it is for yourself, please pop along and see us. We're so creative in Peacefield. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.